In this video, I'm going to show you how to put the connector on the end of the C-Perch tether. This connector is a standard uh, Ethernet connector or RJ45. Uh, it's a little different than some because it's designed to make it easy to assemble. And so we're using that with this kit so uh, it's not quite so tricky. The first part of the uh, assembly is to cut off about two inches of the outer coating of the cable. Now, you want to take something sharp and just score the outside of the cable, making sure that you don't cut through all the way and cut any of the pieces on the inside. Sometimes this takes a little bit of force, but in the end it'll pop off and you want to check to make sure that you didn't nip any of the plastic insulation. Okay, so to prepare this, what we do is lay these four out so they don't cross over each other and then we need to untwist them. One way to do it is to kind of do it with your fingers. Another way is to take the outer coating that you cut off, stick it on and just rotate it around. It makes for pretty easy untwisting. Now to make the assembly easier, an important thing is to straighten out these twists. So what we're going to do is hold the base of the cable and pull down and basically make them as straight as we can. The straighter you can make these, the easier it's going to be to assemble the cable. Once we have these really straight, we can lay them out and now we're ready to put them in the right order. The C-switch and C-perch use an order of wires that is exactly the same as the most common Ethernet cable. So if you learn this color code, uh, it'll be very handy for you when you eventually have to fix an Ethernet cable or make up a jumper cable or something like that. There's two types of uh, wiring schemes. There's the A and the B, and we're using the B, which as I said is the most common. Now, there's several places where you can see this color code. If you have one of these crimping tools, you'll see across the bottom, there's an A and a B, and the B shows the color code. Also, on the C-switch circuit board, on the right-hand side, it says Cat5E colors, and it lists 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and it shows you the colors. The wires, there's four basic colors. There's green, brown, orange, and blue. And then for every color, there's a pair. There's a solid color and that same color with a white stripe down it or a colored stripe on white. So it's important to get that correct. So if I have a look at my chart here, the first color is orange and white. So that's this one here. So I'm gonna put that off to the side, to the left-hand side. Followed by orange. Followed by green and white. Now you might think that the next color would be green, but that's actually not the case. The next color is blue. So take the blue, then the blue and the white, then the green, go back to green, then brown and white, and brown. And you want to organize these so that you have not too many crossovers at the bottom here. Because the next thing you're going to want to do is basically pull them out straight and get them as close together as you can in the correct color scheme. Once you've done that, then you need to snip off the ends in a little, a little bit of an angle, but as cleanly as you can. I'm going to check these wires again, they don't feel quite right. Orange, white, orange, green, blue, blue and white, green, or brown and white, brown. Okay, good. So once you have them like that, you lay them out flat, holding them together, then you take the connector. Now if you hold the connector with the little gold fingers pointing up, number Pin one on, is on the left hand side and that's where the orange goes. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to slide them in and push them all the way through. Now this is where this connector is different than most. Most connectors you can't push them all the way through. But this one you can and it enables you to check it before you finish. Now I can see straight away I have a problem because I have two white ones followed by two color ones. So I need to pop it back out again and rearrange my colors. Orange and white. Orange. Green and white. Blue. Blue and white. 
green. Brown and white. Brown. Put them together. Trim them off. Put them in the connector. Gold pins up. Push them all the way, all the way in. Pull the wires. Okay. One more time. Orange and white. Orange. Green and white. Blue. Blue and white. Green. Brown and white. Brown. So it's good. So I know I'm set and ready to go. Then, the final assembly, you take your crimping tool. Flip it over and find the side that has the 8-pin connector. And you see it has a little divot in it, and that divot lines up with the clip. Push the wires through the hole. And fully push that plug in there. And it should actually fit all the way down the side, and the wire should be coming out the back. When you're all set, squeeze it. Let it go. Pop the plug out. There may be a couple of hangers on in the end there, and you're ready to go. Give the cable a tug, and there you have it. This is the other end of the power cable, and this is where we connect to the battery. So we need to separate the wires about six inches, and then we're going to strip off about a quarter of an inch off either end. Now, you're meant to screw these on to the clips, but I'm not a great fan of screwing wires down because usually you get little frayed pieces. But before we do that, we need to put on the plastic insulators. Now, once again, the red is the positive. It goes on the wire that we've identified as the red wire. In this case, the one with the copper conductors. Put both of these on. And we're going to put these through, and once we've got the cover on, we can put them on either one. Bend the wires up a little bit. And pushed it in so I can see the wire at the top of the alligator clip. Now I'll get my solder. Because this is the large piece of metal, it'll take a little while to heat it up. So I just like to push some solder on there and let it transfer the heat and then once it's nice and flowing I'll put some more on. Keep going until you see it flow onto the actual clip. Ah, see right there now I can see that it's flowed and it's making good contact with all the metal around that. So now I can take this off. I'm going to hold it still for a little while because it's a fairly uh, large piece of metal so it's going to take a little while to cool and you can blow on it and once you see it set you can move on to the other one I won't touch that because that's hot push the wire in do the same thing again put some soda on just to get things flowing Now, if you have some pliers or a crimping tool, once this is done, you can squeeze the end here and it will grab the insulation of the wire, which will make for a very nice, strong contact. All right, so it's flowed nicely. I'm going to wait for it to cool. If you make it grip something, then it's easy to push the uh, plastic cover on. Cool down enough. I grab something and then I can push this on here and I'm ready to go. So now both sides are connected and it's through the hole.